Right, so racism and the Labour Party have been an ongoing story since Jeremy Corbyn ran the show, of course, except where various reports on his time in power, such as the Labour Leaks report and the Ford report, not to mention documentaries such as Al Jazeera's excellent The Labour Files showed, racism in all its forms was being challenged under Corbyn. He was being undermined every step of the way from within by the Labour right, still in control of the party administration as they were, not to mention their right-wing mainstream media allies, especially The Guardian, that so-called liberal paper, painting the lifelong anti-racist leader as the worst of racists, the anti-Semitism scam as it was. But by weaponising that, opening that can of worms has turned out to be a poison chalice for the current Labour Party, for the Labour Party that came later, the party of Starmer, the party of the Zionist lobby, the wing of the party where the racism really lies. And having opened this Pandora's box on anti-Semitism to bring down the first mainstream political party leader in decades who would have transformed this country for the better for ordinary working class people up and down, repeatedly saying the fish rots from the head as a swipe against that leader of the party who is ultimately responsible. So now as the real racism of the Labour Party gets exposed, the failure of Starmer to actually deal with it, in fact every accusation made against Corbyn falsely, can now be aimed at Starmer with a case to back it up. And Labour are now suffering for it in an overdue show of karma. The fish truly does rot from the head. Right, so racism in the Labour Party is one hot topic of conversation again, as it should be when it is the genuine article and it is failing to be dealt with. In fact, a blind eye is being cast to people to suit the current leadership, unlike previously where it was not, despite claims to the contrary by the many enemies that Corbyn had within the party and without, such as the fear of change by some, the representation of establishment interests that he threatened by others. Keir Starmer was always the establishment's man, the knighthood should give that away. Frankly, in this day and age, any politician accepting some sort of a gong has doffed their cap to changing nothing in this country. And sadly, two out of three main party leaders are knighted. And the other one is Sunak, and who wants more of him? But equally, it shows the probable alternatives are no better. And so it is coming clear to more and more people, despite mainstream media silence mostly on the matter, that Keir Starmer is no better. And worse, the racism accusations that led to him becoming leader contributing in no small part to Corbyn being toppled, the weight of accusations baseless made against him meant the lies travelled around the world before the truth got its boots on. Of course, Brexit was what ultimately finished Corbyn in that 2019 general election, but that was in no small part due to Starmer and his ilk as well, was it? Coming out for Remain as he did with a second referendum option on the ballot. And just like so many other things, policies mainly, that we can point to since then, Starmer never meant. He's all about making Brexit work now, ever since he became leader, hasn't he? Which should have shown both people that he is nothing but a brazen liar, prepared to do or say whatever he wants if he thinks he can gain from it. Starmer has staked his reputation, such as that is, on dealing with anti-Semitism as we know now, though. He made such a huge deal of it. But what we've learned over time, of course, is that not only has he failed to do that, but he's treated every other form of racism as secondary, in order to promote his credentials as ensuring anti-Semitism never rears its ugly head again. Except he hasn't. More Jewish people have been purged from the Labour Party under Starmer than under any other Labour leader ever. His is not a party that challenges anti-Semitism, his is a party that instead champions Zionism and equates that with anti-Semitism. The recent court case of David Miller showing anti-Zionism to be a protected characteristic in the workplace makes that an impossible pill to swallow any more and impossible to accept from Labour going forwards. By doing that, though, he has always left himself open to real accusations of anti-Semitism catching up with him. And so it comes to pass that the Rochdale by-election may actually end up being a defining moment in Starmer's leadership. Their candidate there, Azar Ali, had been accused of what they called an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. And Starmer has always said that his party has zero tolerance for anti-Semitism. Zero tolerance. All Ali did was agree with Egypt's version of events regarding October 7th and the Hamas incursion into Israel, where Egypt said they'd warned Israel sometime before that something was going to happen, and Israel very much to, uh, just allowed it to. So they could do what they'd been doing in Gaza for the last four months as a consequence of that. Seems a completely plausible thing for Egypt to say, being a mediator between Israel and Hamas for some years, they've got no reason to lie over it either. Yet this... This, according to the Labour Party, was anti-Semitic conspiracy. 
how dare you question the Zionist state? So with zero tolerance, he was out, right? No. Starmer stood by his man, you see. Same faction. While numerous former Labour members were thrown out on trumped-up charges of anti-Semitism over the last four years, whilst Corbyn himself was cleared by the NEC and then summarily suspended by Starmer abusing his, his executive powers, and similar stories can be told about other Labour MPs and officials too, Starmer made an exception in front of the whole country and has been eviscerated for it. As author and former Corbyn speechwriter Alex Nunn said on Twitter about all of this, so the competent adults are in charge and Labour is not supporting its own candidate after standing by him while saying he spread an anti-Semitic conspiracy for which they have zero tolerance, except for when someone on their side does it until it becomes too politically costly. Nail on head, as Alex so often is. Every Labour MP who has campaigned with Azhar Ali now must offer an apology, surely, for spreading anti-Semitism, therefore. Take Angela Rayner, for instance. She released a video promoting Ali. Surely she needs to apologise at least twice for that, then, and, and then still be suspended, because that is how it works, right? Apologisers still get the boot. That's how it works. That's how it worked for Kate Ossimore the other week, didn't it? Lisa and Andy was up there and campaigning for Azhar Ali, endorsing Ali. And we know the party knew about what he'd said because allegedly there are mixed accounts now about where exactly the leak came from, but all agree it was from within the Labour Party itself. So they knew all about them. They still knew all about what Azar Ali had said and they still let him stand. How is that zero tolerance? In fact, just this morning it has come out that at a meeting in Hindburn, Lancashire, which incidentally was held last October, Ali made racist remarks by repeating what the party consider an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Not having been published, I can't say if it was repeating the Egyptian claim, but it was supposedly in relation to the Israel-Gaza situation. Numerous Labour councillors were in attendance, so the Jewish Labour movement, for whom all Jewish and anti-Semitic things under Keir Starmer's leadership must be judged and run past, have demanded that all of those councillors that were there be suspended as well. What, for just being there? Well, that is completely in keeping with Labour's handling of anti-Semitism, isn't it? Heck, Whole groups of people were prescribed retrospectively after Starmer decided to abuse his power again, didn't he? That is how, for example, film director Ken Loach came to be expelled from the party. Sanctioning anyone for just being there. Thought police. But nobody's got any control about what might come out of a candidate's mouth that you might happen to be in the same room as. It's completely mad, of course. But it is what has been going on at Starmer for years. And the idiots running the right-wing JLM still think nobody's looking. But a hell of a lot more people are. But perhaps this is just an isolated case, Damo. They're only human. Mistakes could have been made in the selection. Well, it's not an isolated case, is it? Let's talk about another candidate that's just come to light now as well. Graham Jones, Labour's guy standing for Haslingdon and Hindburn. Oh, that place again. Yes, because you see, he was also at that meeting in Hindburn. You won't be surprised to hear. Or, and given where he's standing, and or was standing, or was standing, and apparently was rather unkind in reference to Israel and questioned why British citizens were fighting with the IDF. He's quoted as saying, I'm sure when world leaders go home, like me, pardon my French, they say, effing Israel again. No British person should be fighting for any other country at all. Full stop. It is against the law and you should be locked up. Plenty of us are swearing about Israel and certainly we don't expect our people to be fighting for another country. But when it's Israel, apparently it's different. And now Jones has been suspended as well. He is a right winger and awful in a multitude of different ways. But this suspension has caused problems for Starmer as well about how his party actually defines anti-Semitism and how it deals with allegations of it or what they purport to be allegations of it. And in actual fact, so often, as is the case, it's proving more to be about anti-Zionism than anti-Semitism. Again, I repeat, this meeting was held last October. And yet mainstream Labour figures have come out in support of him too. Clearly now in need of an apology and subsequent suspension, because as we know, that's how Starmer handles it, right? Well, who's backed Jones publicly then? None other than Ruth Smith. And she did so as recently as the start of this month. Smith is Jewish, an ardent Zionist, and is probably best known for concocting an anti-Semitism attack on left-wing activist Mark Wadsworth. But electronic intifada journalist Asa Winstanley summed her up better than I can. He said last year, following the truth of the Wadsworth story coming out, Ruth Smith MP had good reason to delete the post, claiming black activist Mark Wadsworth had used an anti-Semitic smear towards her at a Labour event. 
The idea that Mark Wadsworth had said she was part of a media conspiracy was completely untrue. Importantly, he did not make any kind of anti-Jewish comment. In fact, he didn't refer to Smith's Jewishness in any way. He later clarified that he hadn't even known she was Jewish. Wadsworth replied to Smith's false allegations in a statement the same day, describing them as poisonous slander. He said her claims played into a Jewish media conspiracy theory that I utterly reject and have never espoused. Wadsworth's instincts about Smith working hand in hand with the right wing press to overthrow Corbyn were totally correct. Only three days earlier, Smith had played her own minor part in the coup attempt against Corbyn. She announced on Twitter, with a heavy heart, that she was resigning from a junior role in Corbyn's shadow cabinet. It was time to coincide with a series of resignations by dozens of hostile MPs in a failed attempt to force him to resign. They came after the no-confidence vote tabled by Margaret Hodge and the firing of Hillary Benn, another right-wing shadow minister Corbyn had fruitlessly attempted to bring on board as part of his abortive big church approach. But unlike Wadsworth and the others, as a journalist reporting on the UK's pro-Israel lobby, I happen to be pretty well acquainted with Smith's work. I wrote a story about her in 2014 when she was selected as a Labour candidate. I did so because of two key facts, ignored by the, a media that would later pay her such close attention. She had worked as a spin doctor for the Israel lobby and had acted, wittingly or otherwise, as a secret Labour Party source for the US government. Smith, of course, has since been put into the House of Lords by Keir Starmer. There's this rather well-known photo of her at one of his numerous relaunches looking like his minder. So what has Starmer said about all of this? Nothing. People have recently joked on social media about crowdfunding for a fridge for Starmer so he can hide away from his dishonesty like Boris Johnson did. They are as deceitful as each other. But someone might have already done so because he's been nowhere to be seen. For 53 hours straight, the normally regular tweeter, Starmer, was silent, finally tweeting out about having visited Wellingborough with his Labour candidate there, two by-elections going on, going to the polls on Thursday the 15th, completely overshadowed by Rochdale, which is another two weeks away still yet. Both these seats that are being challenged for on Thursday are Tory. You would expect Labour to take both, but will this legitimate abuse of racism being put on show by the party, their ardent support for Israel, just as the government are, as they discipline people for being anti-Israel and anti-Zionist rather than actual anti-Semitism, is that all going to do and have any real effect on those by-election campaigns? Is it going to damage the Labour vote? Because right now, all it does is expose Starmer's regime for being anti-Semitic itself, on top of all the anti-black racism and the Islamophobia that is treated as secondary to that, that I've covered in numerous other videos. It's ironic that it is anti-Semitism that is hammering Starmer's leadership so much now, though, when he states so much on fighting it, yet is now being exposed to have been blatantly weaponising it instead, and going into a general election this year at that. He deserves nothing less. He is purported to fight racism, when in reality he has fought criticism of Israel, and now it's destroying his administration. Like the coward he is, he sent shadow ministers out to defend Hazar Ali, and left them all in a giant pile of doo-doo as he inevitably caved in, in the end, and suspended Ali. And now it's happened all over again within days with Graham Jones. There have been two national polls out in the last 24 hours showing Labour's lead over the Tories is plunging. According to More in Common, no, I've never heard of them either, Labour's lead has dropped just 11 points now, a majority of 40, so supermajority territories out. And the much better known Savanta has seen Labour's lead drop to 12 points, a majority of 60. These polls were conducted before the current anti-Semitism fallout, the events that have happened in Rochdale uh, with Azhar Ali and Graham Jones. These drops have come as a result of Labour bidding its Green Prosperity Plan. So there's likely to be more damage to come at the polls if this racism issue is cutting through. And it did after all with Corbyn, so why should it not now? Especially when these are the same people making all the accusations last time. Of course, some in the media are coming to Labour's defence, because of course they are. Some are even blaming Jeremy Corbyn for everything that has gone wrong in Rochdale, or at least trying to, as this video will explain all about. He's only been leader for four years now, guys, this Starmer chap. Have you heard of him? It's time you Corbyn stopped living rent-free in your head, surely, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.